The statue of Grandfather Lenin, just like the one in Moscow, 900 kilometers away, squinted into the smoggy distance. Winter's first snowflakes settled on its iron shoulders like dandruff. Even as Daniil Petrovich Blinov passed the statue and climbs the crumbling steps of the town council, he feels the grandfather's 360 degree gaze on the back of his head, burning through his fur flap hat. Inside the town council hall, a line of hunched figures, men and women and their entire families, warm their hands on the radiators. They progress towards a wall of glass partitions. Daniil enters the line, waits. He rocks back and forth on the sides of his feet and flexes his calves to promote circulation. Next! Daniil steps forward, bends down to the hole in the partition and speaks to the bespeckled woman behind it. <clears throat> I'm here to report a heating problem in our building. What's the problem? We have no heat. He explained that the building was a new one this winter was its first, and someone seemed to have forgotten to connect it to the district furnace, and the toilet water froze in the night. The bespeckled woman heaves a thick directory onto her counter. Building address, Ivansk Street, number 1933. She flips through the book, licks her finger every few pages, flips and flips. Uh, consults the index, flips once more, shuts the book, folds her arms. <clears throat> that building does not exist, citizen. <laughs> what do you mean? I live there. Not according to the documentation, you don't. 1933 Ivansk Street. Never heard of it. I have 13. No. 14 people living in my suite alone who can come here and tell you all about it. 14 angry citizens bundled up twice their size. The documentation, citizen. We'll keep using the gas then. We'll leave the stove on day and night. Would that be a good use of a government subsidized resource? Address again. 1933 Ivansk Street, Kirovka, Ukraine, USSR, Mother Earth. Yes, yes. We will have the gas engineering department look at it. Next! Was it 14 now? Had he included himself in the count? Careful to avoid the ice patches on the sidewalk on his way home, Daniil wondered when he had let the numbers of people who live in his suite elude him. Last month, 12 people, including himself. He counted on his cold, stiff fingers. Baba Ola and Inya and Uncle Tim Cole and their three small children. Uh, then Daniel's niece and her friend, but they hardly counted since they ate little and spent most of their time at the Institute. Daniel himself, Uncle Timko's mother, Great Aunt Nika, on the balcony, uh, yeah, second cousin Glebik, uh, his fiancée, and their six hens, which were not included in the count, but who could forget the damn noisy birds? <laughs> and someone's mother-in-law or second cousin or who really knew. Daniil's name had bounced from waitlist to waitlist for three years before he was assigned his apartment by the Kirovka Canning Combine, where he worked as a packaging specialist. The 10-story paneled Novostroika was newly built and still smelt of mortar. His fifth floor suite was no larger than the single room he had shared with his parents in a communal apartment, but he could call it his own. The day he moved in had been nothing short of sublime. He walked to his sink, filled a glass of water, guzzled it down, then lay on the kitchen floor with his legs squeezed into a gap between the stove and table. Home was where one could lie in peace on any surface. 
He felt fresh and full of hope. Then, a knock on the door. The Neil's grandmother, Baba Ola, burst into the apartment with four mildewy sacks of grain and a cage full of hens strapped to her back. She ranted in Ukrainian, which the Neil barely understood because he was raised and educated in Russian. Baba Ola cursed her neighbor, who either was in love with her or had it in for her and had threatened to poison himself or her, or perhaps both. Daniil simply nodded, ashamed to ask for clarification. And so Baba Ola stayed. Two. Two had been fine. Until two became 14. Mm -hmm.